everybody. I am, as Heather mentioned, Ben Tulsma, and I am excited to be here with you today talking about real-world connections, an important topic and one that's close to my heart. I was always uh, a little offended when people have said, when you get out into the real world to my students, as if the world that they were living in wasn't real. But sometimes it seems that way. Sometimes the way we've designed education makes it hard for students and even for teachers to recognize that the, the lived experiences inside your walls are real lived experiences that are important. And we're going to talk today about how to make that uh, intentional, about how to bring that out for your students so that they feel that sense in your classroom. Before we get going, I'd just like to ask a couple of questions. If you could please let us know what is your role slash grade slash subject. Um, and in the comments box, just talk about why this topic is important to you or what you hope to get out of this session. We would love to get your responses. Go ahead. For a great conference this week, we just finished yesterday our Science on the Grand conference. We had educators from all over the country coming to Grand Rapids, Michigan to learn more about science education. Uh, we do have registration open for that for next week, so as soon as you're done here, you should probably head over there and get signed up. Um, it's a really, really great experience where you get to, to learn from teachers who are doing all sorts of interesting things all over the country. We've got a lot of elementary or middle school people, uh, middle school teachers, we got a couple of high school teachers in there as well. We teach a wide variety of science subjects. How about uh, why this topic is important or what you hope to get out of this session? Craig talks about trying to make science more meaningful, and that's really what it's all about. When you talk about making those real-world connections, you help drive home the meaning and the import of what you're doing with your students. Yeah, Ann hints at this idea of application. And we want to make sure that students understand that they're learning what they're learning for a reason. That it's going to be significant in their lives. Yeah, I think based on what people are saying, what we have uh, put together for you today is going to be is going to be helpful. Hopefully, we're going to be able to give you some strategies and specific resources that you can use. So uh, I hope that the next half hour is a really productive and really interesting and engaging time. So let's dive in. Here is the agenda. First, we're going to talk about why real-world connections are such a big deal. Uh, you're already convinced of their importance, but sometimes it's good to reflect about that why before you really get into the what. Then we're going to talk about strategies for making your real-world connections more powerful. Those are going to be general ideas that you can use to, to come up with ideas for how to develop uh, real meaningful experiences for your students. And last, we're going to provide you with some specific resources, especially one I'm particularly excited about it's coming out in August, uh, that will help connect your students to the world and connect the world to your students. But that's what we have in store today. So first on this question of why real-world connections are such a big deal, I'd like to show you a picture of somebody, a really interesting gentleman right there. Anybody know who we're looking at? The famous mathematician, and uh, if you will pardon my French, his name is Pierre de Fermat. I'm probably am mangling that, don't you think? No. No, I'm pretty good? All right, that's as good as I can do. Um, but he was a mathematician way back in the 1600s, and he came up with a really famous conjecture. Uh, for any uh, n greater than 2, there are no integer solutions to that equation, the a to the nth plus b to the nth equals to the other that just doesn't exist when n is 3 or greater. And he famously made this really interesting comment in the margins where he proposed this idea. He said he discovered a truly marvelous demonstration of this proposition, that this margin is too narrow to contain. So he had this uh, communication that he had solved this in a really elegant, really powerful way, but he never expressed it, and it never got out what that solution was. And so mathematicians struggled with this for the next, actually, 356 years. This uh, was proven, this theorem was proven in 1993, but for over 350 years, people struggled with uh, coming up with an elegant solution to it, with any solution to it. And this idea, I, I bring this up right now, because it didn't do that, it didn't do any good. That marvelous demonstration didn't do any good if it only existed inside the mind of one person. Knowledge, learning, 
is meant to be communal. It's meant to get out into the world. It's meant to make the world a better place. I think as educators, that's why we do everything that we do. All of the learning that we accomplish in class, we want that to get out and to have some sort of impact. And that happens in a couple of different ways. One way is indirect, where we learn something, and eventually that learning allows students to become more productive, more competent, more helpful adults. The other way is direct. When they learn something and then they can immediately apply it. When the actual stuff they're working on and learning makes the world a better place right then and right there. Both ways are important. Not everything that you're going to do in your class, in all probability, is going to have a direct, immediate impact on the world. Sometimes we give kids the skills that they're going to eventually need when they grow up and they take over the world and then we hope that they use those skills to make the world a better place. But if all of our school experience is that indirect kind of improvement, if all of what we do in school is just uh, learning about how you might eventually be able to make the world a better place, then kids start to feel like learning is detached, that it's not real. We need to give students those experiences where they connect with the world outside of their classroom. We need to help them see that because then they understand the reason for what they're learning. And when they understand that reason, they're going to be more motivated. They're going to retain it better. Uh, and also, well, it has a positive impact right then and right there. So today we're going to talk about ways to have that direct impact, to make that immediate impact on the world. So, I'm curious, if you think about um, students doing projects which connect with the world, which have real and meaningful impact right away, what sort of things have you done, or have you heard about somebody in your school doing, or have you seen uh, educators doing in the world of education? If you were going to think about ways to make the world a better place, to have students do that process uh, in a direct way, what comes to mind? Take a moment and talk in the comments box. And mentioned Skyping uh, an author. She's actually stepping on the toes of the presentation. We're talk about that resource, the particular Skype an author resource on the presentation. Bringing in local professionals, talking about bringing the expertise of people outside of your school. Connecting with students in a different country, doing some, uh, some peer learning, but with students from a different culture. It's a great idea. Talking about getting the community engaged. I'm talking about revamping a playground to make it more handicap accessible. All those are great ideas. There's so much good that's going on in the world of education with regard to this idea of, of real world connections. It's exciting to see. Writing letters to legislators. Oh yeah, it's really powerful as well. Starting a community garden. Things that have a, that real, actual, visible, tangible impact. I love those ideas. That's great. And so uh, here at Studying Invasive Species, yeah, yeah, I'm talking about uh, taking a stand on an issue, doing some recycling, volunteering, all, that, all of that is outstanding. So here at Van Andel, one of the things that we've been working on for the last year is just asking this question because um, we wanted to develop resources that teachers could use to help their students make the world a better place. So we asked, what kind of projects would have this impact? How could you make a resource that would do this for students? And as we came up with ideas, we started to notice them drifting into different categories. And sometimes those categories are helpful to think about when we think about coming up with ideas. Uh, we just had uh, Dave Burgess come in and give an outstanding presentation on being creative. Uh, one of the sessions, the breakout sessions at Science on the Grand was a crash course in creativity. And one of the things that he talked about was how um, he's no more creative than anybody else. He just does two things. He works hard at it, and he asks the right questions. He frames his world to think about where he can get his ideas, and categories can help us do that. So we discovered three big categories that we found super helpful and that we would love for you to steal as you think about how to have projects that have a real impact for your students. Those general strategies, that's what we're going to talk about next. Here they are. We talked about helping students to raise awareness 
about an important issue. When students teach others, they learn that content more deeply. And also, they can see a visible impact as people gain knowledge or gain expertise about something that matters to them. Another way that we identified for students to make a difference in the world, have a real impact, do real world projects, is by raising money. Money can have a powerful impact in a lot of different areas, and there's so many good causes that can be effective with funds. Students can participate in that by doing fundraisers for causes, again, things that they are interested in, that they care about, and which are uh, emotively impactful for them. And this last one is one that uh, we really stumbled on as we worked through this process, and we find it to be perhaps the most powerful. It's this idea of forming relationships. When students are able to connect with people who have different lived experiences than they do, when they connect with people who are in need of those meaningful relationships, we've seen that happen and it's a really powerful thing. So as you think about developing real world experiences for your kids, these are three helpful categories. How can you uh, raise awareness? What issues could you raise awareness about? What funds could you theoretically raise with your students? And how could you help your students form connections with populations in need? Let's look at some specific examples of each of those. When it comes to awareness, uh, two of the projects that we developed uh, deal with germs and nutrition. We have a project called Prevent the Spread where, where students learn about public health and then they're tasked with producing a public service announcement that teaches about the health topic that they've researched. They can uh, spread that uh, using a video, using their video to all sorts of different populations, including maybe some younger students in their school. They have that pride of being a teacher and they spread that knowledge that makes the world a better place and they learn the content really deeply as well. The project that we developed about nutrition was called Food for Thought, where students develop healthy recipes, they create a book, and then they spread that book around and encourage the people in their community to make one small change, to consider one unhealthy food or habit that they have, and to substitute it out for a healthier, healthier alternative. And it gets students thinking about this idea of taking those small changes and multiplying them, adding them up over person after person after person and how they can have a, a really large impact by spreading awareness of important topics. When it comes to raising funds, we have a really cool project called Lend a Hand, where students get involved with the idea of micro-lending. This is the idea, actually somebody won the Nobel Prize for coming up with this idea that there are many individuals in uh, developing countries that could really use, could really benefit their communities with just a little bit of extra money. Uh, maybe they need a piece of machinery. Maybe they need a little bit more livestock. And if they had those things, they could make use of the resources all around them. So the students learn about economics, but most importantly, they actually raise some money. They make a microloan to an entrepreneur in a developing country, and then they watch the impact of their donation. They watch as it blossoms into uh, beautiful things all around the world. Another one that we do that, that raises the money uh, was called State of Sustainability, where students learn about problems with sustainability and they look at issues which exist in their state. Eventually, they create uh, a book and when they sell that, they raise money to help protect and preserve the environment. That's a cause that, uh, at least in elementary school, students got really passionate about. And to be able to see yourself raising money to do something like that um, can be really powerful and meaningful. So we can raise um, awareness, we can raise money, we can also think about forming those relationships. One of our projects is called Moments to Remember, and we encourage students to form a connection, form a relationship with individuals at a senior center in their community. They learn about that person's life, they connect that to history, uh, the history that that person lived through, and then they use their language art skills to produce a book, a biography of that person's life that they can present to their senior friend and that can serve
serve as a memento for that new uh, relationship they connected with. We watched that project. Uh, one of our pilot teachers did, did that up in Rockford, and it was so much fun. It's so powerful to see those uh, connections form between the fifth graders, in this case, and the senior citizens. Both groups really loved it, really valued that experience, and it drove home to us the power of helping students make real-world connections by forming real relationships with people who, can meet, who are in need of it. Another one of our projects is called Fifth Years of Interest. In that project, we teach students about financial literacy, but most importantly, we get them to connect with high schoolers, with people who might have lots of questions, big financial decisions which are coming up. And we encourage the, the younger students to take what they've learned and to teach lessons to those older students and to make commitments together to practice good uh, financial habits. That's a really powerful project as well, and in large part, it's powerful because of the relationships which are formed. So we bring up those different categories just to help you brainstorm, to help get your creative juices flowing. You can ask yourself, how could I help my students raise awareness about an issue? What issues are important to my students? How about uh, in terms of raising funds? If we think about those important issues, are there any ways that students can really see their impact by conducting fundraisers and raising money for a particular cause? And a really great idea to consider who in your community could benefit from forming connections and relationships with your students. How could your students be of benefit just by making a new friend with somebody who's a little bit different than they are, with a little bit different experience than they do? As we built those projects, we realized something really powerful. And that was that we could integrate our content into really good projects. Whatever content we wanted, we could find a way to tie it into those projects. And so if you start with that real world impact, if you start with the heart of the project, you're going to be able to integrate your content. Another really powerful thing is to encourage collaboration between classrooms, between uh, peer groups of students. We found that to be extremely valuable as well, and to be a real-world connection in and of itself. When you encourage your students to collaborate, you give them that authentic audience, and it makes them uh, really a lot more interested and motivated to do their best and to consider what you're doing to be uh, real work. So those were some general strategies, some big, broader ideas, some categories that you can use to come up with ideas for your classroom, for real uh, projects that you can do that will have an actual impact. Now we're going to talk about some specific strategies that you can use to connect your students to the world and the world to your students. So right up there in the upper left, you see Start at the Heart. We just talked about that. You can tie your content into powerful projects. If you think about what's going to be powerful, what's going to get your students engaged, what's going to help them wake up and be excited to come to school every day, well, if you develop those projects, you will be able to connect your standards into them. Sometimes we think that we ought to start with a math standard and say, how can we build a project around that? I know I had a tendency to do that for a long time in my classroom. But when we start with projects which have that real world power, you'll find that you can tie your content into them every single time. Another great way for you to get student uh, ideas, a great resource to come up with these projects is to talk with your students, to get them to buy in. It helps to ask their opinion. What issues do they care about? What causes uh, are they passionate about? What problems do they see in the world? And how can you work together to solve them? As we looked for ideas, we also found it really helpful to reach out uh, on social media, using Twitter especially, to connect with other teachers who are doing the kind of things that we want to do. In fact, all of the Blue Apple projects that we have have a project author, somebody who had this kernel of an idea, um, and then we just worked with them to help develop resources that teachers could use to make these real-world connections a reality. So if you're curious, reach out. Um, and, and down the bottom right, use Google as well. Find out what other people are doing um, and steal it. That's what teaching is all about. Some other resources for making those real-world connections. In the bottom left, you'll see Skype a scientist, um, and then just above it, Skype an author. 
the world is really interested in helping produce the next generation of leaders, of people who care about the same things that they care about. And so you'll find great resources like Skype a Scientist and Skype an Author. You can Google both those phrases and, and come up with the, with the appropriate websites. And what you can actually do, for example, with Skype a Scientist is select a scientist with a specialty in just about any domain. So whatever your project deals with, you can find a scientist who's passionate about that topic, who cares about teaching students about it, who's willing to answer some questions, to Skype into your classroom, and to talk face-to-face -face with the next generation, to share their enthusiasm and their expertise. ePals in the upper left there is another great resource that can help you connect to do some collaboration with students in different areas around the world. There are actually lots of different resources you can do that, uh, use to do that. On the right side, um, we can think about how to connect our students with a bunch of different audiences. In the upper right, we'll see Use Your School. There are all sorts of, there are three main different groups in your school that you can use to give your students an authentic audience. You can have them present to their peers. Uh, a little bit of a step up from that is to bring parents in and have them share their work with parents or connect and present to parents. And then last, you can bring in other teachers and even administration. When you have students capitalize on those authentic audiences that you have, Andy, right there in your school, well, that drives home the idea that the work that they're doing is real. You can go beyond the walls of your school as well. You can think about uh, contacting local businesses who might be involved with or interested in the cause that you're addressing. You can think about uh, going all the way to your legislature. A couple of the ideas that were mentioned earlier um, dealt with taking a stand on a public policy issue. We actually have a project called uh, Take a Stand where fourth graders are encouraged to do just that, to make a podcast about an issue they're passionate about, and then to actually advocate for public policy change in a, in a political way. Think outside the walls of your school to think about how to give your students those real world connections. And of course, don't be afraid to help them spread their ideas with all the incredible media technology that we have these days, including social media, but also your local newspaper, your local uh, TV station. They're always on the hunt for really cool stories, uh, for things that are happening in, the, in their community, and you've got a great story to share with them. So reach out. Giving your students the ability to get in the newspaper or get on TV is another way to drive home the real impact that they and their work are having. And I've mentioned this a couple of times, but uh, in August, on August 5, Blue Apple projects are being rolled out. Uh, these are the projects that we've been developing just for this purpose. We've got uh, 10 different projects right now. They're targeted for fourth and fifth grade, but you can adjust them, you can adapt them uh, to connect with, with students in all sorts of different grade levels. And they're built around some of the big ideas that we've been talking about here about uh, helping you tie in content connections to really powerful real-world experiences. They provide professional development and assistance with doing this in a really powerful and effective way. They think about collaboration options to help your students connect with other students, um, and also providing some of those actual real-world connections. We went out and we called some, some businesses. We called some experts. Um, we sent emails back and forth and found people who were willing to communicate with your students and share their passion and their expertise, and they also provide project plans and supplies. We know that there are lots of barriers to teaching like this. We know it takes time. We know it takes resources. And we wanted to help bridge that gap. And so we're super excited to be rolling those projects out in August. So at the beginning of the day, we gave uh, an agenda of three items. We wanted to talk about why real world connections are such a big deal, and we talked about how all learning is meant to improve the world, and how when we do connect our students with the world and help them see that their learning is real, it has a real impact, it makes it more memorable and meaningful for them. We also talked about strategies, about broad, general ideas that you can use for making real-world connections more powerful. We talked about these categories that you can use to generate ideas. How can you raise awareness? How can you raise money? And how can you help your students form relationships? And we provided some, just the tip of the iceberg, some resources that you can use to help connect your students to the world and the world to your students. So after spending a little bit of time reflecting
reflecting on the issue, uh, what are your main takeaways and what will you be excited to try in your classroom? If you've got another great resource or great idea, now's a great time to share it with the other participants in the room. If you know something that helps form those powerful real-world connections, go ahead and enter that as a, an additional resource because we know that teachers have all sorts of incredible ideas and we want to serve as a conduit for sharing those. Go ahead. BlueAppleTeacher.org uh, is not free to use as a paid service. However, since we're a nonprofit organization, the, the costs will uh, be covering, essentially the fees will be covering costs and going to support uh, student programs and, and things of that nature. It's a great question. Colleen loves the connection with older community members. That was such a powerful idea. And, and it exists all around the opportunity to to do this project exists all around the country. It seems like something that if that idea starts to spread, can be really powerful, can have a real impact for the students, a real impact for the seniors, uh, and it can help students uh, practice their skills and see how applicable and powerful what they're learning really is. Yeah, forming community partners is another great idea. Connecting with local universities, yeah, they were really helpful as we looked for real world connections, several university professors, um, or even uh, some participants uh, in, in uh, learning process were willing to share their expertise that they've been developing. Tara likes the idea of the micro-loaning. That's such a powerful idea as well. Great to see that impact and wait to see that sort of ripple effect of what the students are doing. Anne talks about being a detective, bringing in real detectives. That's an awesome idea. Thanks for sharing that, Anne. Oh, you're welcome, Cheryl. It was really our pleasure, the power of community in our schools. Yeah, you want to make sure that you help your students realize that their learning is real, their learning is important, and their learning can make a real difference in the world. Our time is winding short today, so I would like to make sure to say thank you to all of you. You took some time on July afternoon to pay attention to how to structure real-world connections for your students. That means that you care deeply about them, you care deeply about your profession, and we care deeply about you. We really thank you for all that you're doing to have a real impact on your students and on the world. Thank you.